morning. The next thing I remember is being woken up. I think it was probably around 2 o'clock that morning to have my last drink from food before I, ha I had to stop eating and drinking. And, then, um, and yeah, and then I just went back to sleep for a bit. Um, and to be honest, that just felt like another two minutes. Although probably another couple of hours. Um, I think my mum woke me again at five, so it was obviously a few hours. Um, yeah, to start getting myself washed, dressed and ready before, before she woke the other two up. And they started getting ready. Um, I remember sitting in front of, ra uh, in front of the TV which, uh, listening to Radio Lollipop with my little sister again. While my mum and dad finished packing the bits that we, we'd got out for the night before. And, um, you know, putting away anything else that had come out of the cases and stuff. Or our bags, whatever. Um, before we headed down to the reception of Western House with all of our bags. Due to it being so early in the morning, there wasn't actually anyone there on the reception first to drop our room key off. So we, you know, left it under their desk um, and headed across the road to Great Ormsley Hospital. And then we made our way across to Dinosaur Ward where we were very quickly checked in, which was quite nice really, that we didn't have to hang around to be checked in. Um, and we took them straight through to the waiting area for operations, which is not the picture that I showed in my pre-op blog because I couldn't actually find um, a picture of the waiting area. Um, yeah, we've left to our own devices for a little while before having a very friendly and very familiar face, otherwise known as Gaynor come down and sit, sit, which was, to be honest, that, was, that I wasn't expecting either, so that was quite a nice surprise to see a familiar face. And yeah, she came through my temperature for a few hours. Um, did she, oh my, after a few hours of waiting, my dad took himself and my little sister off to get something to eat and drink, as I hadn't had anything all morning because obviously I couldn't eat or drink and they didn't want to eat or drink in front of me. So they felt that bad and didn't want to sort of, you know, rub it in sort of thing. So yeah, my dad then took her off to get something to eat. What the hell was that? Um, anyway, yeah. And then when they returned, my mum went off to find something to eat um, and get something to drink and that sort of thing. Um, I knew it was unfair so I had to sit around until I went down theatre because obviously they didn't know what time I was going to go down you never know if, if there's any delays or anything. But well, now I've got to stop this video a minute, my cat's just um, got a fob and I've got to take it off of her. Uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I didn't finish this video yesterday as you can probably tell because once I took the fog off my cat my camera and uh, my camera then ran out of filming space so yeah I uh, go through the camera upload what I already had on there that I hadn't uploaded and yeah so I think if I'm right in believing where I left off was um, my parents going off to get something to eat and drink um, so yeah I'm going to start it a little bit before um, just because I'm not sure where I ended to be honest um, I knew it was unfair if I had to sit around and wait until I went down to theatre because, you know, without them having anything to eat and drink because obviously they didn't know what time I was going to go down because you never know if you're going to be delayed going down or, you know, you never know what's going to happen sort of thing and obviously what time you're going to go down and um, but obviously part of me wished I could go and get a bacon sandwich or something with them but obviously I knew I couldn't if I really wanted my operation to go ahead which I really, really did more than anything in the world. I really wanted it to go ahead. Um, yeah, every time I nurse or remember a staff walk near us or past us, I got really, really excited thinking, oh, maybe it's my turn to go down to theatre. But it still wasn't at that point. Um, I, I had to carry on waiting patiently. Um, however, every time I saw another child go down for their operation, this made me excited as obviously it was one less person until it would be my turn to go down. Um, Eventually things started to speed up and nurses and anaesthetists were coming to speak to me more and more often. So, you know, I then sort of knew I must be getting pretty close to going down for it to be my turn. The next nurse who came up up came up to me did like the magic queen. That's what they always call it anyway, but I don't actually know his proper name, but yeah. Um so yeah, I knew then that, the, that I only had a matter of hours left before it would be my turn. Uh, the magic cream has to be on for a few hours so that it numbs your hand ready for the cannula. I only opted for that option because that's what I've always had since I was little. And so, you know, to me, I didn't know other... There is obviously other options, but it's just what I always instinctively go for. 
and I was just so excited waiting for my turn to come around and the wait really didn't bother me too much although I was wanting to get into this and that one in here. Stage 1 of rib graft is where the surgeon, in uh, Neil Baldwin in my case, will remove cartilage from your ribs. Most commonly it's on the opposite side of the ear. So, because my, my right ear had been op operated on, they took the cartilage from my left rib. I mean, said right then. Um, yeah. Uh, the surgeon only gets one chance of getting it right, as uh, so they have to carve the shape of the ear into the cartilage and if they muck it up it's not one of these things that can just be redone or sewn back on again because obviously you know you can't do that with cartilage and um, the surgeon will cut cut at the little ear which I always hate the thought of that bit I don't know why even like you know this many years on I just don't like that thought of the you know, my little ear being cut and um, but yeah anyway yeah um the surgeon then places the, the carved cartilage under the pocket of skin of the little ear that they've cut um that getting sent shivers down my spine thinking of it. Don't like that thought. I don't mind obviously having it done because I've had it done, but that thought is just ugh, I don't know. Anyway, and then they use suction to suck the skin flat against the cartilage so you can see like all the detail and um, which you'd see on a normal ear. And then this is stitched up so that the cartilage cannot come out. Um yeah. Finally nine nine forty AM to be precise. Um after a very long wait, Gaynor came and brought me my hospital gown and yeah, let me go and get changed into it and pointed me my mum to a little room where we could go and get me changed into my gown. And then you know, then knowing that that was I knew then that was the last part of the, you know, um to go and that I was the next one to go down because they don't give you your gown until you're gonna be going down. You know, so that's like the last thing that happened to get your gown. And then usually it's a couple of minutes or so and then they call you down to theatre because they're ready for you. Um, so yeah, that was quite exciting really. Um, yeah, like I said, I knew that's the last part of the journey and that you know I'd be going down to the anaesthetic room any time soon to go to sleep for the next four to six hours. Um, but by that point, to be honest, I'm so tired anyway. I could have just done it for them, <laughs> but saved them a job, but anyway, yeah. Um, I remember while I got changed into the gown, my mum, you know, did the back of it up because it was such a pain to do. Um, yeah, and then we just sat in that little room for a little bit, just watching a bit of Jeremy Kyle on TV because that was all that was on at that time in the morning. Um, and then, yeah, Gail came in and said it was my turn to go down to theatre. And that feeling of knowing that the wait was finally over is just, and it still is such an amazing feeling. I thought, oh, it's like a slight sense of relief, I suppose. I don't know, but it's just like the best feeling ever. Um, and yeah, I just remember so, I remember it so clearly, but, but yeah, it is just such an amazing feeling, there were no words to describe, and they still aren't, and, um, uh, yeah, so I slipped on a pair of shoes, um, to walk down there, my dad, my dad, um, wished me good luck before me and my mum headed off, um, down the endless sets of corridor, or, or what felt like it, anyway, after going down all these endless corridors, that's what it felt like to me, probably about two, but it didn't feel like a lot because I couldn't wait to get there. And um, yeah, we finally reached the anaesthetic room with obviously the bed and some units with a few bits of equipment and stuff. And um, yeah, I remember asking Gaynor, I remember Gaynor asking me to get up onto the bed, but because it's so high, my mum ended up having to help me get up on it because I was only a little short time. And um, yeah, and I just lay there knowing that I was not very far off getting my new ear and then in a matter of minutes I'd be asleep for about the next six hours and um, would wake up with my new ear which was such a great feeling and I was just so excited for the, an the anaesthetist and their team to come in and help get me to sleep. I remember going to stand there chatting to me and my mum you know, while we're waiting sort of thing um, and yeah she was commenting on how slow Neil Ballslide was being. Um, and that maybe we should go tell him to hurry up. I mean, to me, it felt like a long time because I was just so excited and I just wanted to get it, you know, get done with it sort of thing. Um, yeah, a few minutes or so later, a couple of people, probably about two or three, came in to start the process off and explain what they're going to do and how it's all going to, you know, happen and how it can make me sleepy and that. Um, yeah, very, very soon after, it wasn't that long after at all, actually, um, I was told to lay back and count back from ten. And then, yeah, everything just started going like, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. It's not like fuzzy, but 
and like but it's so like my eyes were getting really heavy and there's so like, you know like in the cartoons and they get hit on the head with the mallet and they've got the little birds or whatever flying around the head I suppose it's kind of like that it's quite a good thing actually <laughs> but yeah it's so like dizzy but I wasn't if that makes sense and um, yeah the next, uh, next thing I remember was opening my eyes and being in the little cubicle in recovery with you know various nurses seeing how I was and making sure I was coming out of the anaesthetic properly before asking before they asked me if they wanted me to if I, before they asked me if I if I wanted them to ring my mum to come down and see me which I said yes to so yeah not long after um, my mum arrived in the recovery to see me. My, my memory she was a little hazy like when I was under the anaesthetic and that and like where I'd had other medications and that during surgery and that and um, yeah but I can clearly remember this part I don't know why well I do know why this bit there and um, I can cl clearly remember my mum looking at me and getting quite emotional and one of the nurses having to sit her down on one of the chairs next to the bed and putting her head between her knees and giving her a cup of water sit for them and I remember trying to flop my arm over the bed which fell quite a few times and I ended up just hitting myself so that's good fun um, yeah and eventually the third or fourth time lucky I actually managed to get my arm over for her to hold and I, I, I clearly remember saying this to her <coughs> okay sorry about that um, my battery just died on me so yeah I had to sort that out um, anyway where was I yeah, and I remember. I really clearly remember saying to my mum, "I'm I'm okay, mum. You don't need to worry about me." And she wanted my mum to be okay. I could tell she got herself in a bit of a state, and I was okay to be honest. And I just didn't want her worrying anymore. Yeah, I mean to be honest, I've never seen her get like that with all the operations I've had. I've never ever ever seen her get like that. And I just thought, why is she so upset? Sort of thing. I just didn't understand why. Yeah, but I later found out it was because my mum wasn't expecting me to look the way I did. And by that, I mean like having drains coming out the back of my neck, sort of like all down here, out the back of my head, um, to drain away, you know, all the blood and, you know, to stop infection and that sort of thing. I had fair drip, I had drips all wide up, all the way along my arm, both arms actually, um, and then other, various other machines attached to me, and wires and heart monitors and... Yeah, as well as like the usual canola, which I actually had four of those. I had one in each hand and one in each foot. So that's good fun. Um, yeah. The next thing I remember was me and my mum being taken back to the ward. I remember being wheeled, obviously, in the bed down the corridor. And I remember waking up, waking up in the bed in um, a little room with my mum, my dad, and my little sister around me, which I was a little confused about what had happened. What actually happened was I'd fallen asleep on the way back to the ward due to still having like the anaesthetic in me and most likely due to the other medications that, that I'd been given during the surgery. Um, yeah, I then remember my little sister pestering me to open presents and look at the balloons on the end of my bed and could I see a dolphin, which I had no idea what on earth she was talking about. I mean, yeah, what was she chatting about a dolphin for? I really didn't understand. Um, because obviously I was still coming in round from the anaesthetic and that, but I definitely was not crazy. And there were no dolphins in the room. Um, and my mum said to her, just you know, give me a little while, because I've said to have woken up and that. Um, um, my little sister at the time, she'd been probably about eight, seven or eight, something like that. Um, so yeah, she didn't really understand what was going on too much. Um, eventually, after a little while of her pressing with me, I gave in and said I'd look at this dolphin what it was, was that my little sister and my dad been to the little shop in Great Ulm Street, like in the hospital. And my little sister picked out a dolphin balloon, which was really sweet, you know, because she wanted to give it to me and that. That was quite sweet. And then my dad had also picked me out a balloon that he put on the end of my bed. So yeah, the end of my bed ended up completely decorated with balloons, which is so sweet, really. I really like that, actually. That's quite sweet. And yeah, and while I was in, Peter, my mum, my dad and my little sister had gone out shopping in London nice and they would believe me <laughs> fine um yeah and they bought me some like little presents and that which was really sweet and i hadn't expected to be honest i mean i didn't feel up to opening them at that particular time but i could see how much it meant to my little sister for me to open them but like, then and there so yeah i bet i vaguely remember some of the things i got such as you know um zoo tycoon ds game a couple of jack and wilson bookmarks 
a lot of little teddy bear that my best friend Daniel bought me. And then I really, I remember this quite clearly actually. My mum and dad um, bought me a card that had a little pig on the front of it. And I can, I can clearly remember the message inside saying something about um, having two flappy ears now or something like that, which made me smile knowing that I now have two ears. And obviously my mum picked it out because pig ears are quite flappy and that. Um, but yeah, that's really sweet. Um, I have still got it somewhere actually, but I'm not quite sure where it is. But I know I've definitely got it, I've never checked that one out. And um, I remember my little sister disappearing for a little bit. And then my little sister and Jenny, the play specialist, both coming in uh, with a little handbag card that my little sister made me, which was really sweet. Um, I've still got that one as well somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where that's gone, but I have got it. I've kept everything like that. Um, yeah, I remember my head feeling really, really heavy. And so to my mum, to, I probably still under anaesthetic and stuff at this point, but so I, I don't remember saying this, so my mum told me. Um, I remember my head feeling heavy, but I don't remember saying this, though, but I told my mum to tell Neil Ballstrode that I didn't want a bandage full of bricks. And um, could he take them out and give me a new ear, as it wasn't a very funny joke. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, obviously she didn't go and tell him that, because, yeah. Um, Soon it was time for my dad and my little sister to leave and start making their journey back home. And me and my mum settled in for our first night in hospital. And boy, was that a long night ahead. I will update more in my next video about the week's recovery, so stay tuned. I'll see you in a bit. Bye!